Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be sharing these seven tips I use on a daily basis in Luminar that are gonna help you up your post-processing game right after this. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the video. On this channel, we talk landscape photography. So if you're into landscape photography at all, consider subscribing to this channel. Now in this video specifically, I wanna share some tips and specifically seven tips and seven things you can do in Luminar that are going to help you up your post-processing game. Now, Luminar is a software that I really believe in. I believe that they're really listening to photographers lately and making huge strides gaining in the post-processing world of software companies battling it out as to who would be the best software company for post-processing and landscape photography. Look, like, a long time Lightroom and Photoshop were up here, but now Luminar is like gaining on them because they're actually listening to photographers, getting feedback on their software and really thinking about how they can elevate technology of post-processing as technology gets better, post-processing gets better. And I really think Luminar is making huge strides on that, which is why I decided to switch from Lightroom to Luminar and really focus on that software platform to up my post-processing game. So in this video, I wanna share seven tips that I use on a daily basis in Luminar that really help me up my post-processing game and make my landscape photographs that much better. And these are also gonna help you out. Let's get right into the computer screen now. Okay guys, jumping right into it. The first trick that I always use when I jump into Luminar is my clone stamp tool. You can use this in Lightroom in a version. There's a little bit better version in Photoshop, but the clone stamp tool is built right into Luminar, which is what I love about this. So all you do is go to tools and then select your clone stamp tool, which is what we're in right now. And it's going to give me an option of setting the source. Now, all, you have this target that comes in right now. So I have this spot right here that was made when I had a dust spot on the end of my lens. And I, look, my lenses are always dirty, so I always have dust spots. So I'm just gonna click on a similar shadow or color tone, and that's going to set my spot. I can change my brush size up here. If I just click this, it's gonna allow me to change that. I always keep my softness all the way up on 100% because that's going to give me uh, a lot more blending options when I'm trying to blend this in and make it unnoticeable that I did this. And then opacity too, you can change how opaque this effect is. I keep mine on 100 because obviously I'm trying to get rid of this dust spot. I don't want it to be 50% opaque and still there. So. Now that I have my spot set, I have my brush set up, all I do is click right here and it's going to paint in my target source where I had it and boom, that spot's gone. I hit done and this will process that dust spot out. I use this all the time because again, I have dust spots all over the end of my lens. If I zoomed up, you would see tiny little dust spots all over these mountains. And this was a sunrise from Klingman's Dome in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, by the way, using a Sony 70-200 F4. Okay guys, so we use the clone stamp tool. We got rid of the dust spot, familiarize with that because that's a huge asset to Luminar and your landscape photography post-processing. The number two thing that I do on the regular with my post-processing is use presets. Now I know that may irk a lot of photographers and be like, well, can't you even edit this from scratch? Yeah, I can, but presets are a starting point for you as a photographer and help you increase your ability to edit and make the editing process faster. And Luminar has all these preset options for you, like basic, dramatic, outdoor. I know you would immediately flock to outdoor, but I've been through those a lot. I find for landscape photography, the best preset to use is the mild image enhancer. And what it does is just add some more boost, contrast, clarity, and some saturation to that image. And what I love about this is, like this is a little bit too much editing for me. So what I love to do is 
click this and drag it down. Just dial down that preset effect until I get it to a spot where I really like it. And then I'll leave it there. And you can actually go into your filter workspaces and see like exactly what it's done. You can adjust that. But that kind of leads me to my number three thing is using workspaces. So after I select my preset, what I'm going to do is click on add a new adjustment layer and I'm going to put in a new workspace and preferably the landscape workspace since I'm working with landscapes all the time. I'm gonna insert that workspace in here and now I can adjust a lot more on top of that preset. Remember, I said a preset is a starting point allows you to work within this image a lot more. So I'm gonna increase my contrast. I'm gonna increase my shadows some and bring that up, increase my exposure just a little bit. And then scroll down here to see what else we have. Clarity, I'm gonna increase, allow that to pop out a little bit more. Uh, this accent AI filter and sky enhancer, I'm gonna to get to in just a second. And I'm just gonna work with my colors here. I'm gonna add some more vibrance because vibrance works with blues a lot more, like blues and green tones. That's what I'm gonna use instead of saturation. And that looks pretty good. So that also leads me, I just talked about these accent AI filters and sky enhancers. These are my number four and five things that I'm working with of the seven things that I always include in my post-processing workflow. So you used to have to go in here and like add a new layer and add a new filter, but now they're built into a lot of these workspaces. If they aren't, you can always go to add filters and scroll all the way to the top and it's gonna be your Accent AI filter and AI sky enhancer. What Accent AI filter does is a lot of different things at once. It, it, it separates highlights and shadows, adding more contrast. It does add more contrast, it adds more clarity, it works with your colors. So it does a ton of different edits in one filter. So I like to just pull this way up and see what it does for my photography and then I'll just dial it back down. So if I pull it way up, you see, you know, it's adding more detail in these shadows. It's separating out those mountain ranges, but I want it to look realistic. So I'm just gonna dial it back down to where it still looks realistic, about to an 18. And then Sky Enhancer really looks for sky tones a lot. So you'll see that it'll work uh, with my blues, it'll work with oranges. And in this image particularly, I want it to affect my oranges, which it does. And it really makes this blue peak pop out right on the top. And it, it just looks for those sky tones, it works with sunrises, it works for sunsets, it works for blue skies, and it really pulls out like blue tones and warmer tones a lot more. I really like the sky enhancer too. All right, number six thing, I'm gonna add another layer for this. So I'm gonna go to plus layer and add new adjustment layer. I'm gonna add a filter, and then I'm going to scroll down to number six, and I'm going to find my dodge and burn filter. This brings up a lot of different options that we can work with. First off, it's gonna ask me how much of the amount that I want to apply. I'm gonna keep that on 100 and then click start painting. And then I have a lot of options that come up here on the top menu bar. Number one, dodging and burning is an effect that you can either lighten or darken areas. So I'm gonna keep this on lighten and I'm just gonna find different areas in here. And I like to increase or decrease my brush size with the left and right bracket keys on my keyboard. So let's find areas to brighten. Number one, I want to uh, brighten out this fog down here. So I'm just gonna paint in some lighter tones right there. Uh, I might dial this down to like a five instead of a 50 and even might dial that down a little bit more than what it actually was, maybe like a 3%. I'm going for subtle effects here. So then darken, I'm just gonna find areas like this first mountain right here. I'm just gonna find that and darken that up some and paint in this effect to darken that in. And this is just allowing me to separate tones out more, my highlight tones, my shadow tones, and really elongate that contrast as much as possible. I'm gonna to go to done, I like that effect, I like what it did. I could do this all throughout this image if I wanted to, but you know, I like the effect that it had 
way down here in the fog portion and this front mountain portion. And that leads us to our number seven thing, our last thing in Luminar that we can do to improve our landscape photography, and that's adding a luminosity mask. Now I did a whole video on this that I'll put up on the screen right now for you to go to check out and see like the whole in-depth process of what this is, how it affects your images, but I'm just going to go to add filters and I like to add luminosity mask by using a tone curve. So in my filters, I'm just going to scroll down until I see curves and that's going to bring up a tone curve for me. And what I'm doing is again, creating more separation between my highlights and shadows. So I'm going to increase my highlights, which is on this upper part of the tone curve and then my shadows are on this lower part and I'm just going to make a really slight S curve through my image and then I'm going to hover over my curves bar that I just did. I'm going to click on this paintbrush and I'm going to scroll down to luminosity mask and click that and that's going to add this effect only to my 50% gray tones and lighter and give me a much more realistic and accurate look and it gives me a ton more detail within my shadows and within my highlights too of 50% gray and lighter. It just allows me to make more detail in my image. So once this finishes up, I'm going to go in and select my before and after look. See, it kind of like took that starkness off. So I'm going to click this before and after and like this is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like after. So just knowing that this is a huge difference in this edit and how we can use Luminar to make photos better. Okay guys, that does it for these seven tips wrapping this video up. Look, familiarize yourself with these tips. Learn how to use them best because when you start using them over and over and over, you get better at using them after the practice. So be sure and implement these things to your own photography in Luminar and I guarantee your landscape photography is going to get so much better. If you like this video, you found it interesting at all, hit that thumbs up button, comment below on some more videos that you may wanna see in post-processing, and also continuing watching is always an option too. You can watch this playlist that's showing up on your screen right now that has a lot more tutorials on how to use Luminar to improve your landscape photography.